Hi friends, Christy Glass here with a finished object for you. It is the Tecumseh by Caitlin Hunter. I had such a fun time making this sweater and I want to tell you all about it. So I was watching the Knitters League right before I was heading off to EYF, Edinburgh Yarn Festival, and I noticed that Sophia was doing a test knit for Caitlin Hunter and I was so excited because it had this little color work situation happening at the yoke. I think she was doing hers in red and white and I thought, oh, Caitlin Hunter has a new sweater and I want to make it. So I found out what the yardage for the sweater was before the pattern was even out. I asked, I got a little inside information. And so that I could shop for the yarn at Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Now I didn't know what I was going to purchase. I wasn't sure. I just knew that I wanted the yardage so that I could get souvenir yarn in preparation for the sweater. As I was walking around, I actually didn't do as much shopping as I wanted to at EYF. I was a little scattered, but I happened upon a booth that was shared by Jill Draper Makes Stuff and Daughter of a Shepherd. And Jill Draper actually lives in Kingston in the Hudson Valley and is very accessible to me when I'm in the Hudson Valley. She has an open studio around Rhinebeck, New York Sheep and Wool, and last year, 2017, she shared her open studio with Daughter of a Shepherd and then they combined again at EYF. So I didn't make it out to her open studio, so I was very excited to see them together. And I've been really wanting to make a sweater out of a natural brown yarn, like naturally brown from the sheep. So I was very drawn in by this natural brown yarn at Daughter of a Shepherd. It is a 75-25 mix of two different sheep breeds, of which I can't really pronounce them, but uh, I will do my best. It's 75% Hebridine and 25% Zwartbowls. Zwartbowls. I pulled out my measurements of how much yardage I needed and Jill and uh, I can't remember her name, Daughter of a Shepherd herself helped me pick out the yarn. So this was the base. I actually have a ton extra so I'm not sure what happened there. I don't know if I just had the wrong information because the pattern was still being tested but I have enough to make a second sweater of this yarn. And then I got my color pops from Jill. Jill's DK weight was the Cormo right here. So beautiful, I will tell you a little bit about it. So she sources her yarn from the Hudson Valley and she names her yarn after local, like with local names. So this is the Mohawk Uncommon Teal, 100% unregistered NYS New York State Cormo Wool. And I just really do enjoy very much knitting with Cormo and this, was a really wonderful choice. I am looking forward to working with more of her Cormo. This color, uh oh, where's the label? This label has gone missing, but as you can see, it's a nice chartreuse color. And I love how they paired together. It was wonderful to be in the booth and hold them all up next to each other and see how the colors would work together. And I just really enjoyed how it, how it came together. Now, one thing to note, the DK weight I find can be a little tricky. So this natural fiber was almost thinner than the Cormo. That's also a problem, I guess, when you mix different sheep breeds. So I did a swatch and I liked the way the fabric was uh, knitting up and ended up choosing my gauge based on the brown, which I think was the right choice because most of it is with this dark brown yarn. And even though the Cormo was a bit heavier, I like how it kind of pops out of the, of the body. When I was in Edinburgh, I ran into Elaine Tom, who was one of the test knitters for Caitlin. She was wearing her Tecumseh, and I took a picture of it, and she pointed out that she had done color dominance on the first uh, repeat and then forgotten for the second two. So these little epaulettes, I don't know if that's the right word, these little, I think of them as shields, these little shields, were much thicker on the top than on the rest of the garment because she had switched out her dominance. So if you are confused by what I'm talking about, basically color dominance is the direction in which the yarn is coming into the garment. So if you are able to do color work with your left and right hand, you would hold the dominant color in your left and the non-dominant color in your right. And many patterns will say, this color is dominant for this section. For example, the Jelly Roll sweater, which is like one by one or two by two or one by two, it has 
a note in the pattern which color is dominant so that you know which hand to hold the yarn in. If you don't do two hands, there's another trick where one yarn is coming underneath the other one. So that might make sense to you if you don't knit that way. So I was really careful to make sure I had the colored yarn, the pop of colored yarn in my left hand every time I was using it. So I feel like the whole, uh, the three repeats are very uniform in their dominance and this, the color really po pops out really nicely. If that doesn't make sense to you, I mean, some people don't think color dominance is a thing. I've heard that before too. So maybe just do some YouTubing and see if people talk about color dominance and how they use that technique. The only other um, part of this pattern that was interesting for me is, because it's, it's a pattern that requires positive ease and I didn't want 14 inches. I think it's at 14 inches. So I think I have maybe, maybe more like eight or 10. And as I was knitting, I felt like this was so big and I discussed on my Insta story, should I, should I, uh, separate for the sleeves here or do as the pattern says and do it down here. So many people replied and the people who were working on the sweater or who had studied the sweater said, keep going and split where it says to split because this sweater is oversized and kind of has a bit of a swancho feel to it. And one person said, you should definitely split for the sleeves now. And she's a really well-known designer. And so I thought about her advice, but then after I heard from so many people who had been working on it that I should keep going, I decided to stay true to the pattern. And I don't regret that. It is a slouchy, cozy sweater. And then I could only have to do, then I only had to do one more repeat on the sleeve, which is a cropped sleeve. So I knit it just like the pattern said to, and I feel like I really nailed it with the intended fit of the garment. I, I feel like sometimes I struggle with that a little bit with Caitlin's patterns. I'm kind of doing my own thing, but this one I felt like I really knit it exactly as she wanted it to be knit. This yarn is super rustic and it's English and it's, a little bit scratchy. I'm I'm not super uncomfortable right now. I do think that wearing a, a lining will help help me want to wear the sweater more. It's just got a little of the scratchy factor whereas this doesn't have any. So if you want a next to skin sweater, I would definitely recommend the Cormo. And if I had to do it again, I would probably make a sweater out of this yarn that was going to be more of an outer layer. The good thing is this has plenty of room so I can layer it up and be more comfortable. This sweater flew off my needles, it's DK weight. They always seem to go faster and I just wanted to get to the next section so it just made my knitting even, just even more rapid because that's how I always am with Caitlin. If she puts color work on the entire garment, I'm in and it, it goes by so quickly. I love this piece. I feel like it's such a great statement. I feel like of all of the pieces she's come out with, this one has so many variations because you really can't, the sky really is the limit of what three colors you choose. So I just wanted to share my Tecumseh with you. It's by Caitlin Hunter of Boyland Knitworks. Loved knitting it. I continue to love her patterns and I want to thank you for checking into Christy Glass Knits and I'll see you next time. Bye! Thank you.